May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, on this Easter Sunday morning, my text comes from the gospel that has just been read, starting in verse 14. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are, are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. On behalf of the wonderful company of bishops, the House of Bishops of the Anglican Network in Canada, it's my joy to greet you today and to bring this message. Bishop Trevor, Bishop Stephen, Bishop Ron, Bishop Don, Bishop Malcolm, and Bishop Andy. It's my joy today in the midst of everything that we're facing, here I am in my home, to preach to you of the death, the burial, but particularly the resurrection of Jesus. It's a joy, even in this situation, because the Bible says this message is something that every person needs, and that includes you, my friend. Let me say right now, lest in my Easter enthusiasm, I lose you along the way that the message today that we have exclaimed with joy, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. Make no mistake, he who died, died for you. And so that when he was raised, he was raised for you. This is the message. The gospel is for you, my friend, and you need this message. In fact, writing of the resurrection of Jesus, the Apostle Paul said, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, <clears throat> that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he has appeared to Cephas and then to twelve. It's the receiving of this message of a crucified, buried, raised from the dead Jesus that saves and keeps you for all eternity when received by faith or believed. As a matter of fact, it's the only thing that actually works that actually saves. Let's remember, this is the Jesus who through him all things were made by him and for him, and the same Jesus who one day will return in glory and bring together all things, wiping away the old earth and he uh, heaven and ushering in a new heaven and a new earth. So he is well able to deal with your need, your sin, your salvation, because he died and rose again. So today it's a joy to proclaim this message has been read from the Gospel of John that first Easter. It began with, for all of those who followed Jesus and loved him, in great sadness and no hope, no hope at all. Though in the Gospels it records that whenever Jesus sought to prepare the disciples that he was going to Jerusalem and was going to have to suffer and die, he also always added, and on the third day rise. But none of them seemed to have remembered that when he did die and when he was laid in the grave. Actually, in the gospel, it was only Jesus' adversaries who, when he died, in Matthew's gospel, it records that his adversaries remembered that he had said about rising on the third day, and so were eager to seal the tomb extra hard and place guards on it, lest any rumor begin that he had been raised from the dead. So John 20 begins with one individual, Mary Magdalene. Some of the other Gospels suggest that there were other women, which makes sense because later she says, we don't know where they have laid him. On Friday, the day uh, we often call Good Friday, Jesus had been crucified. Having cried out, it is finished, proving that by his sacrifice of himself, as Peter later says, on the tree, the perfect for the imperfect, us, he thus had completely paid for our sins. 
And when it says, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus died for sure. This was established when a soldier pierced his side and out rushed water and blood. Jesus was dead. Mary Magdalene was there with others and saw it all. Wonderfully and surprisingly, we're told, a rich member of the Sanhedrin in John 19, Joseph of Arimathea, who John says, after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. So in great haste, because of the Passover Sabbath that was fast approaching, he and another secret follower of Jesus, also of the Sanhedrin, Nicodemus, brought spices. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews, as recorded in John 19.40. Fortunately, the tomb that Joseph had acquired was very close to where Jesus was crucified. A new tomb, never before used, cut into the stone. There the body of Jesus was laid, bound in clothes on his body and head, as was the Jewish custom. The tomb was sealed and protected by a huge stone. Mary saw where they had laid him. So now it's early on Sunday morning, and this dear follower of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, who now that the Sabbath was over, wanted to complete the proper care of the dead body of Jesus. That was her best hope, nothing more. There was no thought, not even a little, that he could have been raised from the dead. So that when she arrived and found the huge stone rolled away and Jesus' body gone from the grave, she was horrified and panicked. It says, so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. And of course, Peter and the other disciple, whom I'm going to assume is John, the one writing this gospel, both immediately ran to the tomb. Apparently, John won the race peers into the grave and it says, and stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Peter, of course, when he finally arrived, went straight in and found no body, but interestingly, it says he saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloths, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded in a, up in a place by itself. And then seemingly timidly, John enters, sees the same situation as Peter had by now. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb, it says, first also went in, he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, it says. Evidently, in the way those clothes were carefully laid, spoke not of a body which had been stolen by thieves, but to John was enough to persuade him that Jesus had in fact been raised. Interestingly, it says, for as yet they did not understand the scriptures. Scriptures like Peter later said, quoting on Pentecost day uh, from Psalm 16, 8 to 11, God raised him, speaking of Jesus, up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, quoting in Psalm 16, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I might not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. When Peter and John left, John believing, though as yet he had not seen the risen Lord, and Peter holding on to disbelief, which was very understandable. There was Mary left at the grave in grief alone. It says, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they've laid him. Interestingly, even speaking with two angels who were standing in holy guard, one at the foot and one at the head, Speaking to these angels did not have any effect on Mary, perhaps beginning to think that, that it's possible that the disappearance of the body of Jesus meant that he'd been raised from the dead. That didn't cross her mind. 
When asked by the angels tenderly why she was weeping, she only replied, they've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they've laid him. And then when the risen Lord himself, Jesus came up behind, even then she didn't recognize him. And when he too asked her why she was weeping, she replied to the risen Lord, who she still did not recognize. He asked and she responded. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And the most famous one-word answer of the risen Lord, Jesus simply said, Mary. And then she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Alleluia, Jesus is risen, she now knew. He is risen indeed, alleluia. And immediately, just as he had said in just one word, so she responded in one word, Rabboni, which is Aramaic for teacher. Devotion, love, commitment, trust, incredible joy, all wrapped up in one name, one word. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, here it is, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. My Father, your Father, my God, your God. Jesus is saying, when I died, Mary, I died for you. And now that I've risen, I've conquered sin, death, and judgment for you. And now because of me and through me, now truly, you have been brought into an eternal relationship whereby not only is God the Father, my Father and the Holy Trinity, but he's truly your Father too. Here's how the Apostle Paul put it. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace have you been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it's a gift of God. My friend, whoever you are, wherever you are, it's interesting that, for instance, the governor of New York said that this disease is the great leveler. And so it is that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and resurrection is something which is for everyone, including you. In similar words, isn't it wonderful to know that this message of a cross and resurrection stands. Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Do you remember in that great verse in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that means you, dear friend. So I want to encourage you today If you are in Christ, you are blessed immeasurably eternally. And let's rejoice. And if you are not sure you're yet there, today, Easter Sunday, 2020, perhaps in your home, is the perfect day to invite him into your life. Today is the day of salvation. Don't let it go by without inviting him in. And I'm going to lead in a prayer as I conclude. Lord Jesus, We thank you that when you died, you died for me. You died for that friend who's listening right now. And Lord Jesus, when you rose from the dead, you rose for me. You rose for that friend who's praying right now. In repentance and faith, Lord, we ask you to forgive us our sins and come into our lives and fill us with the joy of our salvation. For truly, alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.